Morningstar, I'm Christian Charest, coming to you from the Morningstar Investment Conference in Chicago. I'm here with Ben Johnson. He is the Director of Global ETF Research here at Morningstar, and he just hosted a panel discussion on strategic beta ETFs. Now, Ben, one of the elements that you brought up during that discussion was the fact that a lot of uh, strategic beta funds are fairly new and don't have much of a real-life track record. So in their marketing, they rely almost exclusively on back-tested data, and there is a real danger to that. Can you explain why? Absolutely. I think it's incumbent upon investors that they beware of back-tests. So if you look at the U.S. ETP menu, and specifically the strategic beta subset thereof, what you see is that there are more than 600 strategic beta exchange traded products that are out there today. Less than half of those have a track record of, of more than three years. And those funds almost uniformly have been launched to track an index that has been based on a good looking back test. There is no such thing as a bad looking back test. So the risk to investors is, is that they might be sold something that is the result of extensive data mining, over engineering, that might not deliver the same type of performance that it did in sort of a laboratory-like environment once it is out there and investable in the real world. So what's the recommendation then for an, for an investor? If you see uh, a strategy that seems to make sense, uh, you know, the fundamentals sound good, the data looks good, obviously, what's the recommendation then? So I think you have to understand the factor or factors that that particular index is looking to harness. Are those factors bedrock factors like value and momentum? Are those factors somewhat more contrived less well vetted, less well researched, be it by academics, be it by practitioners. Is there, importantly, an economic intuition that underlies those factors? Value makes sense. It makes sense to buy things for less than they're worth because you assume at some point in the future, mean reversion will kick in, the markets will price that particular security fairly. There are others, and there have been more than 300 of them that have been documented in academia, these factors that, that are, are the back-tested sort of product of, of data mining exercises by eager PhD candidates. They don't work out of sample, they don't hold water when it comes to real world applications. So understand the factors, how they're built, whether or not there's an intuition there, and then understand how they're expressed in a given product. Are they somewhat diluted? So in our panel, we discussed cap weighted value indexes. That's a way to get value exposure, but it's more diluted. You, you can think of, of factors and their expressions as, as almost kind of like orange juice concentrate. So in the case of cap weighted value, you've put too much water into the mix. You're not getting much bang for your buck with respect to that factor exposure. If you look at other value strategies that, that try to maybe not put enough water in, you're getting a more potent exposure to that value factor. Now that's not to say one is necessarily good or bad. There are applications for all of these different types, but what is important to understand as an investor is that they are likely labeled similarly. So it's an under important as always to peel back the label on the tin to understand what the actual contents look like, what will deliver, what will be delivered in that strategy. Always good advice to know what you're investing in. Thank you very much, Ben, for uh, all your insights. Thank you for having me. For Morningstar, I'm Christian Charest. Thank you for watching.